this will be a journey of your brain through the perspective of the cerebrospinal fluid. Imagine yourself going into your brain, floating on a pool, or being in the ocean, having the sensation of floating in fluid. Now go into the cerebrospinal fluid, into your brain. Go into the fluid. Actually become a molecule of the cerebrospinal fluid. We are on a voyage of your brain via the perception of this fluid, this cerebrospinal fluid, the CSF. When you come to a particular part of the brain, simply say hello to it. That is all you need to do. Becoming aware of it is all you need to do. If you see a certain part and it interests you, say hello. See if it responds. Starting on the right side of the lateral ventricle, feel yourself gently floating in the cerebrospinal fluid. Imagine yourself as a molecule within the fluid or floating on the water in a bathtub or on the ocean. Start to get a sense of the fluid that you are. Relax into the fluid. Open your mind's eye. You have tissue all around you, brain tissue. There is a large opening with lots of space. You are in the central portion of the lateral ventricle. That is within the parietal lobe. This is very important for integrating sensory information. If you look up at the roof and to the right, you see the corpus callosum. These are the nerve fibers that connect the left and right hemispheres of the lobes of the brain. If you look down, you see the floor. Along the floor, you see the tissues making up the fornix. This carries signals that integrate memory, such as the hippocampus, with body sensations, circadian cycles, parenting, and attachment behaviors. The thalamus, the major relay station and filter for sensory and motor signals, as well as awareness, arousal, and sleep-wake cycles. The stria terminalis, which regulates the acute stress response and anxiety, Output pathways from the amygdala going to the hypothalamus. The caudate nucleus, learning, memory, emotion, and language. And you see the choroid plexus, the structure that makes the majority of the cerebrospinal fluid. If you look to the left, you see the septum pellucidum, a thin veil of tissue separating the two hemispheres of the brain. If you start floating forward or toward your eyes, you move anteriorly into the frontal lobe. This is important for executive functioning and the limbic system, integrating award, attention, short-term memory, planning, and motivation. Here again, looking up, you see the corpus callosum. Looking down and to the right, you see the caudate. And looking to the left, you see the septum pellucidum again. Now you start floating backwards toward the back of your head, going back to the central portion of the ventricle and into the posterior part of the brain. You are now into the occipital lobe, the major area of visual processing. Again, look up, see the corpus callosum. Looking to the right, you see the optic radiations which carry visual information to the brain. If you look to the left, you see the forceps major, the major path for the two occipital lobes to communicate. Now moving your mind's eye forward and a little down toward your ears, we enter the last part of the lateral ventricle. The inferior or temporal part located in the temporal lobe. This is important for memory, language, and deriving meaning. Looking up, we see the temporal lobe itself. Looking straight ahead to the end of the ventricle, we see the amygdala. This is important for processing of memory and emotional reactions. If you would like to float up to the amygdala and make contact with it, do so, gently. Say hello to it. See if it responds. 
See if you can develop a relationship with your amygdala. Again, important for processing memory and emotional reactions. To the right, you see the stria terminalis again and the tail of the caudate. Looking toward the floor of the ventricle, you see the hippocampus, which is important for memory processing. Now let's float back to the posterior part and up into the parietal part where we began. When you are in the central part of the lateral ventricle, if you look down and to the left, there is a little narrow opening, the foramen of Monroe. Let's flow and move your mind's eye through the opening on the left and go through it. You are now in the third ventricle. It is a narrow cavity along the midline of your brain, about the height of your third eye. Feel yourself in this narrow vertical cavity. Start by gazing upward. When you are in the third ventricle and you look up at the roof, you see the fornix, the corpus callosum, the two openings to the right and left into the lateral ventricles. Now look to your right and to your left. The walls of the third ventricle are made by the thalamus. This is a major relay station and filter for sensory and motor signals, as well as awareness, arousal, and sleep-wake cycles, and the hypothalamus that links the nervous system to the endocrine system, body temperature, hunger, parenting and attachment behaviors, thirst, fatigue, sleep, circadian rhythms are all controlled by these areas. Look directly in front of you you see the anterior commissure. This plays a key role in pain and pain sensation. It also works with the posterior commissure to link the two cerebral hemispheres of the brain and connect the amygdala and temporal lobe, contributing to the role of memory, emotion, speech, and hearing. It is also involved in smell, instinct, and sexual behavior. You also see the optic chiasm, the crossing of the optic nerves. Now, if you look behind you, staring at you is the pineal gland. This is important for the release of melatonin and other hormones. It is important for sleep-wake cycles. Take in the pineal gland. Recognize that the pineal gland can directly release molecules into the CSF. Go say hello to your pineal gland. Gently nudge it. Say hello to your pineal gland. See how it responds. Now look below you to the floor of the third ventricle, and you will find what is called the infundibulum. This is the connection between the hypothalamus and the posterior pituitary. It releases oxytocin, the love hormone, and vasopressin for water retention vasoconstriction, social behavior, sexual motivation, and bonding. Now look down and a little to the left of the brain at a single narrow opening called the aqueduct of Silvius or the cerebral aqueduct. Go through this narrow opening and you enter the fourth ventricle. This is a diamond-shaped cavity it is located posterior to the pons, which helps bridge the brain to the spinal cord and cerebellum and the medulla, which is important for autonomic functions such as breathing, heart rate, and blood pressure. And it is anterior to the cerebellum, which is important for motor control and coordination. The top of the fourth ventricle, or roof, is made of the cerebellar peduncles. These are connections from the cerebellum to the brain and the spinal cord and the midbrain. They carry nerve fibers from the brain to the spinal cord, important for mortar control, coordination, arousal, and temperature regulation. Looking to the floor, you see a rhomboid shape that makes up one point of the diamond-shaped cavity. 
This point goes through the medulla and creates a path down the center of the entire spinal cord. Dive into this path and go all the way into the spinal cord. Now, while in the CSF, within your spinal cord, stop at the location of your heart. Connect with your heart. Connect with its energy. Connect with its rhythmic heartbeat. Connect with the love inside of you and the universal love. As you are floating in the CSF within your spinal cord at the level of your heart, slowly gaze up your spinal cord. Look at the hollow cavity filled with CSF. See the fluid going all the way up to your third ventricle, to your crystal palace. Connect your heart to your crystal palace and see the illumination that occurs throughout the fluid. Now you can travel back to the spinal cord, back into the fourth ventricle. This is the diamond-shaped ventricle. Now you can choose to exit. You can choose to exit laterally through the foramen of Lushka. There are two of them. Or you can choose to go out medially through the foramen of Majendi. Now you are in the subarachnoid space surrounding the entire spinal cord. Travel all the way down to the sacrum. Visit your sacred bone. From the sacred bone, you can look up again and gaze the entire CSF and spinal cord through the subarachnoid space. Now you can allow yourself to become absorbed into the CSF itself. Become the fluid as it gets reabsorbed into your body and returns to your entire body. And as a tiny little molecule, you will return to your heart to be integrated into your system.